Hey everyone and welcome back to this week's video and thanking our heavenly father through our savior jesus christ i'm going to tell about today's week of the bible story last week we saw about the situation recorded in the isaiah book for king hezekiah son of ahaz where he is in the position of the assyrian king where he has sent his um we could say his commanders to speak with king hezekiah's commanders or workers as well we can see as we read in chapter 36 we understand when hezekiah heard the message through his officials that's what i should have said before he was really shattered where from the message and almost threat aha no king assyria had given towards him so we finished in isaiah 37th chapter first verse last week talking about how due to the news that it is not like we understand this broke his confidence we can see in one in his, in one way we could say but now we could see he in this due to this news he is not like his father we understand he is he does not do, use his own plans to come out of it though he lost his confident confidence we understand in flesh he surrendered to god completely we understand because ahaz had lost his confidence in the situation when they were in a position of threatening. He lost his confidence and was in fear and he had completely surrendered to the king of Syrians. However, in this situation, unlike his father, Hezekiah has his own, he is not using his own plan to come out though. Even though he has lost his confidence, he is putting all of his self towards and surrendering himself towards God completely. Showing us the difference between the characters of Ahaz and Hezekiah as characters. As we, like we said, we know his father refused to hear the words of God through the Isaiah prophet for that fear that came from the threat was overwhelmed as his thinking process. So here he put the first pr 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 priority to send a message to Isaiah, the prophet of God, to get the protection from God. So we see how... Um, in this situation, Hezekiah is thinking very carefully and surrendering himself to God completely as his first thing is to get the protection from God rather than anything else. So let's read the first, second to fourth verse of Isaiah 37th chapter, which says, He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah of Amos. They told him this is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace as when the children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be the, that the Lord of your God that the Lord your God, sorry, will hear the words of the field commander whom his master, the king Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God. And that he will rebuke him for the words that the Lord of your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. See the words of Hezekiah, how he seeks refuge from God in this situation. So let's read and we can read the reply from God through the Isaiah prophet from the fifth to seventh verse we can see. So then... In this, when God's response through Isaiah says, When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master that this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with those words with which the underla underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed, blasphemed, blasphemed me. Sorry. Listen when he hears a certain report. I will make him want to return to his own country and there I will have him cut down with the sword. So, even after he gained the safe message from God and we can see in this situation how God's plan to here get to get worked by the king of Cush, king of Cush was marching down was marching towards Assyria. Now the threat was not over though we can see as he got another message from King Assyria from 9 to 13th verse, as we've gained the safe message, as even though we got the same message from God, that we can see that the king, that the king Cush will march towards Assyria. And in this situation, I will, ha God says, it through I say, I will have him cut down with the sword. So now let's read 9 to 13th verse to see the next message which says, Now Sennacherib received a port that T 
Tirakaha, the king of Kush, was marching out to fight against him. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Ezekiel with this word. Say to Ezekiel, king of Judah, do not let God... the do not let the God you depend on deceive you, he says. Jerusalem will not be given to, into the hands of King Assyria. Surely you have heard what the King Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will you be delivered? Did the gods of nations that were destroyed by the predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rezve, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath or king of Aparad? Where are the kings of Laya, Sephardim, Hena, and Ivia? So he, in the situation, the king Kush is sending a message as marching towards Assyria to, to, we could say, to the king of Judah, the situation about how of kings Assyria have king of Assyria has shown their dominance when it comes to wars and destroying completely so many kings and kingdoms and saying how can you depend on your god in this situation because he compares for all the other kingdoms beliefs and gods how they did not support them in the situations as they were destroyed by the Assyrians. we can said and he says do not let your god king the king says depend on you depend do not let the god you depend on deceive you we can see because jerusalem will not be given to the hands he when he says jerusalem will not be given to the hands of the king Assyria, uh, Hezekiah says. So we can see the situation, a very interesting situation, and showing the overall power of King Assyria, of Assyrians. So that's all for today. I'll see you next week's video. Bye.